Welcome, this is Pine Leaf Needles, Girls from Middle Earth. For the next six episodes, we will be running through Attack at Dawn. In each of these episodes, we'll be running it through with a different soldier. Now, I n realize that I showed it to you with the various soldiers when I was doing Gondaman, but this time, I'll be running them all with the same character. My attempt here is to show us how each of the soldiers operate and to compare them so that I get a feel for which soldier works best with a warden. In light of this, I am going to attempt to keep a record of each of the runs and then compare the results at the end. Now, of course, a sample set of one is not very good. Therefore, offline between episodes, I will also be running other skirmishes and then totaling the results to see the overall re result. In this case, I'll be running Attack at Dawn, which is the one that will be shown on the videos. In addition, I will do Stand at Amonsul, Thievery and Mischief, Storm and Methodress, and then Siege of Gondaman. Each of these is going to be run at Tier 2. Now, as I've been running with the Archer lately with this character, I will begin with the Archer. Though, in each of the following weeks, I'll naturally be running with each of the other soldiers. Now, my rules for this. My first rule is that I am to have as few buffs as possible on me. Now I will of course have the halted experience one so that I don't exceed the level because if I change the level it would change the results. Second of all I am allowed to use my glass of agrail which is to help to mitigate any dread that may be emitted by a, an enemy such as the echo of death. But I am not allowed to use food. I will not al be allowed to use my javelin ability here to give me plus 18 agility since it has a cooldown and that is longer than its duration. And I'm trying to avoid things which will favor one soldier's run over another soldier's run. Now, when I define each of the soldiers, the rule here is that everything I equip has to be at Tier 4. Therefore, I have a Tier 4 Archer. My Pinpoint Shot is at Tier 4. My Training Abilities, my Armor and my Physical Potency are both at Tier 4. And my Armor Assault for the Personal Ability is also at Tier 4. So all these will be at Tier 4. And when I train each of the other soldiers, I will also bring them to this tier 4. That way, we have parity. And at the end of the series, we'll see if there are any significant differences. Obviously, if there's some minor differences, we could account that for the vagarities of the various runs that we do. Now, let us be off. Now I'm going to try to score these under four items. One is how long it took the run to take, how many marks I earned, how many soldiers I lost, I mean, how many times did the soldier get knocked back and I had to resummon the soldier, and finally how many times I was defeated in the course of the skirmish. If I fail the skirmish altogether, then I will only get the marks earned up to the point where I was knocked out and the penalty then will be getting fewer marks since you get the most marks by completing the skirmish. Now whenever I run these I said I'll be running this a tier 2 solo. In addition 
I'll be running it through the instance finder with a single skirmish selected, in this case attack at dawn. This gives me a 10% bonus for for selecting it only once and I'll also get the bonus for running at tier 2. Now, since there's the trick of trying to keep the time and remembering everything, in each of these runs I will activate chat logging and I will start logging before I enter the skirmish. This way I will know exactly when I started the skirmish and exactly when I finished it because I have timestamps activated. And with timestamps activated, and in case you don't know how timestamps are activated, it is on the options under chat. And up here, enable timestamps on chat. Therefore, let us begin. Attack at dawn. And we're ready. And let us see what we have here. Now this is always a tricky one to get started since the initial pull can always be... a little bit on the rough side. Now, most likely, the soldiers that are later in the playing series will have a little bit of advantage since I'll know the skirmish a little bit better with this character by then. Now, Flax seems to be doing pretty well so far. She seemed to knock two of them off and took minimal damage. And here's the control point. Now there are no counterattacks at this point. Now I can go in two directions, right or left. I'll go right first. And the trickiest one here are always the pulls. And I'm doing a really major job of getting everybody. Which, which is not something I usually intend to do. I seem to now I have a quest from the North Downs to kill trolls in Doldinen. I'll most likely finish that by the time I complete this series. And there is one more weak wolf here. Alright, now I can take this if I wanted to, but I'll be taking that later. Now that will do a little bit against the time, but as long as I consistently do it the same way with everyone else, that's not going to matter. And the reason why I'm not taking it is because there are some encounters that are keyed off of there being two counterattacks. And taking both flags will cause the second counterattack at the middle area not to happen. And since that's the case, there will be some soldiers who will not face two counterattacks, and if there are some soldiers who don't face two counterattacks, that will break the parity. In any case, I need to complete the deed for this skirmish. And to complete the deed, of course, I must be able to get all the encounters. It's going to be a little tricky here without food. Now this one I do take. Now these circles here, they represent places where those boulders are about to fall down which is why I'm trying to avoid them. Now, I can get the enemy into the boulders. Now, 
but I don't want to spend too much time moving around trying to maneuver them. Now, unfortunately, your soldiers are not affected by those boulders, but the enemy are. Oh, there's a blood rook here. Speaking of enemies, I'd like to get to the... Oh. Well, I certainly don't want the blood rook to be fighting the... Now, the damage done is a fixed percentage of your total morale. So if we look at the bar to this enemy here, you notice he lost 25% of his morale, but he gained it back quickly since he wasn't in combat. So it's 25% regardless of which class you're playing or anything like that. That way they don't do it like giving it a huge number. Oh, good grief, a blood rook. And this is going to be a blood rook that's not alone. Alright, that's going to be a real fun way to start. Uh-oh, flax is going to... Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's not a good way to start. Yeah, blood rook in this skirmish is very tough. Because it, we have the same mob density as you have in Tuckbro, and we also have much tougher debuffs that you can receive in the course of the skirmish. And you have the bulk of the lieutenants. Now, uh, here's the other. Now, the other counterattack happens at the gate that we did not take. And that's why I have to leave one untaken. Because if I leave... If I take them both, then there's no second gate for their counterattack to come from. Now, I suppose I should be allowed to have potions if needed. Maybe I should keep a score of how many potions I use. Oh, this is getting tough. Yeah, this second counterattack can get very tough, which is why after I complete the deed, I normally... Oh, good grief, I lost my soldier again. That's twice already. Now that... Shows you how tough this can get. Now, I'm doing this at tier 2. So it's a little bit tougher, and... Since this is a tougher skirmish than Thievery and Mischief, perhaps... I wasn't quite ready to try this one at tier 2 yet on this character. Uh, let us see what we get now. Uh, uh, let's see if I can do a decent. Nope, lousy pull again. All right. Uh, this time I have the bulk of the enemy on me. Oh, I forgot to take care of that encounter. All right, I will hit the encounter as soon as I finish taking these guys out. Now, oh, both Tharb and Zimarp. All right. I thought there was only one, but looks like there are both of them are out there. Uh, it's, uh, I don't feel like dodging all of those at once. Alright, we'll start with Tharb. Tharb is out this way. Oh, I can take this now. Yes, after the counterattack, I can take the flag. 
since there will no longer be a penalty for taking it. Since the gate's already open. Now, the reason why I clear out the area first is because if I don't, and I get Tharb, I'll find myself fighting Tharb and the people that are stationed here at the same time. And that can get rather uncomfortable. So that's why I make sure I clear out this area first beforehand. Alright. Now I've opened up the deed for the encounters. And now Zimarp is here. Now Zimarp could potentially conflict with the garrison that's on that side. So that's why I make sure I clear out both sides but only take one flag. But as you saw here, that after words I can safely take the flag. Now I suspect that the rest of the skirmishes in this series won't be as much of a problem at tier two. Attack at dawn is one of the trickier ones because of its mob density plus the, the opposition is a little bit tougher than you would have in your standard skirmishes, such as thievery and mischief. Now, you have some of the later skirmishes which have tougher abilities for the mobs, but they tend to have the lower mob densities at the same time. And Tuckboro has a high mob density, but the mobs are relatively straightforward and easy to take care of. Now, I think, I think I cleared out this area. Yeah. Now you'll see another one later on, Icy Crevasse, which makes this look like an easy skirmish. Actually, I think I'll take take it this side. Now this is one of the trickier pulls, I find. And I very rarely get a good pull in this, even though the mobs this particular fight tends to be one of the tougher ones I find, even though it's nothing worse than any counterattack you'll get. Alright, now this troll. Alright, two trolls. Maybe by the end of the series, I'll have all the trolls I need. It's a lot easier than going into Dol Dinan and fighting elite ones. Now we get rid of the catapults. And once you do this, the catapults will stop firing into the area we had down there. Now there'll be one counterattack for this. Is there any way I could do worse in this skirmish? Well, I guess losing it would make it worse, but... <laughs> well, it looks like I'm at least surviving. Very well. Now, let me get rid of these alerts. Uh, this quest item here...
I guess there's a minimum level for that. That's a quest item that starts a series it has to do with the Fornost, Fornost in instance. It's a really annoying drop that you have in this... Oh, oh well, yes, that's right, you can't get this. Oh, now I gotta go and get the scout. Oh, and I'm rooted! Ouch! Alright, now... Now, once you kill him, the scouts disappear, so I don't have to worry about killing another scout. What happens is if two scouts escape, you lose the skirmish. Therefore, you don't want to do that, and that concludes the skirmish. I am doing the time only up to the point where you take that flag. Where everything's nice and done. It's from the time I throw my first javelin toss until the time I make my initial pull until the time I take the final flag. And that's going to be the t base time that I'm going to use for scoring the skirmish. But that concludes our first run of Attack at Dawn. And that is with the archer. Next time, we'll be running it with the Banner Guard. Now, you will see down here what the final score was that I'm going to be using as my baseline, which is going to take into account all of the results from the various skirmish runs. But I'm only going to be broadcasting the run for Attack at Dawn. Until next time, this is Pine Leaf Needles. May your shield protect you, and your spear never break.